so I think this is our time. What's gone before, we can't really go back and change. We have to deal with what is now. And mistakes have been made over a long period of time and the consequences are appearing. So we're seeing climate changes, biodiversity loss, soil infertility, toxicity, all of these things. And we have to ask why? And when we understand that it's because of greed and ignorance, then we have to change that. We have to be conscious and generous. So we need to share with one another. And if we share, there's plenty. If we don't share, then we have people who are accumulating billions and billions, but we have billions of poor people. So that's a recipe for tragedy, for war. And we basically know what war is over a very long historical time. And war is hell. And it's, it's there. No one actually benefits. But people pretend that they benefit by dominating others and by stealing from others and saying that now I stole it and it's mine. Well, I mean, that, that's not a real <laughs> legal point of view. You know, you can't actually... Uh, argue that and um, so what we see now is all over the world people are aware of this their food their water their air their climate regulation their weather regulation their relationships with one another their relationships with animals and plants the future of their children everyone know, knows now that this is in grave danger so when you're facing grave danger, you have to do something. And what I've been looking at is after I learned that it's possible to rehabilitate large scale damaged ecosystems, I decided, well, that's a responsibility. And it's also a right of everyone to do. And if we all do that, we can't even fail. So humans are that capable that if we choose to restore all degraded lands on the earth well it's pretty wouldn't even take that long you know and that's the lowest cost and the highest impact we could possibly have but if we look around now we we are in a we're in a pickle <laughs> you know it's it's not so easy to get out of this mess but we have to so how do we do it? Well, we do it by working together, by learning that we are all relatives, that we're one family, and that we've been traveling around the world and learning and have different cultures and different cosmologies, but we're all the same people. We're all related to each other. And now we're facing these problems. Who understands this? The indigenous people understand this. They've been living with wonderful, beautiful forests and savannas and grasslands and wetlands and huge herds of wildlife. It's only this idea that, no, no, that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to build monuments to ourselves and you know make these huge phalluses all over the place. It's ridiculous. So now if we take this on and we're seeing that people all over the world are willing to do that, if the rest of the society, if everyone starts to value this and everyone recognizes that everyone has rights, you can't just like say, well, no, you're slaves or you die in, on, in the edge of the desert somewhere because we stole your land a few hundred years ago. You know, what, what, what are you talking about? So once you get past these things which sort of are you know just evil and, and inequitous then you get to like, like okay what do we do well we restore the soil fertility we restore the hydrological cycle we restore the vegetation and the biodiversity and that is how the climate is naturally regulated it that that's it so much of the work that we need to do is physical we yeah. got to take care of the soil right beneath our feet we got to collaborate with the people in our region 
but we also need to share and collaborate as a species to tackle these bigger challenges. How do you see the ecosystem restoration camps combine local work with learning as a species? Yeah, I, I, I think what we're having to do is to realize that restoration of ecological systems is the great work of our time. This is the responsibility that all who are alive now have to ensure the survival of human civilization. So the, when you look at the scientific data, you go, oh my God, goodness, it's, it's so dangerous that if we fail to address these things, then humans could go extinct. Well, that's not normal. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not normal for us to accept that. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> have to, to we, we have to say, look, no, I don't accept that. We're going to do everything we possibly can to survive, to ensure that our children and future generations have a life. So in doing that, we have to understand that there is a pathway that opens up. There's a window of opportunity. So we know enough to say, okay, we have studied soil and atmospheric science and hydrology and fertility and biodiversity. We know that these are the basis of the oxygenated atmosphere, the freshwater system and the fertile soils. And so if we bring them back, and we've also proven that we can do that in large scale. So I have documented that, I've seen it, and I've seen it work in every continent. We can do it and we must do it. And this is the responsibility of everyone. And this is only doable by everyone because by treating people as consumers or workers, we're saying, build more, buy more, consume more, use more energy, use more everything. We don't need that at all. We need to restore ecological function because that's the true value, the true wealth on the earth. We have to share that with everyone. So if we do these things, then we're on a trajectory which will return natural evolutionary succession and regulation to the hydrological cycle, the weather and the climate. Well, that's what we need now. So this is the great work of our time. This is the task before us. And if we choose to do this task, we know how to do it. But it requires that we drop the pretext that what has happened in the past determines what we do now. Getting out of this problem is that we learn to work together, that we forgive and we do the right thing, that we treat everyone with respect and we create an economy of love so that everybody is collaborating, we share everything and we go to the next level. Otherwise, we face increasingly horrible outcomes. So what should we do now? It's already happening all over the place, people acting locally to restore the Earth's life support systems. What are some key elements that oh, we're talking about this? What should we set up to create the world we want to see? Yeah, I think, I think that obviously biodiversity, biomass and accumulated organic matter are the keys for restoration. But we need a kind of infrastructural development which will allow this. And I've been thinking about central kitchens, creator spaces, and cultural stages. So if we do this right, we'll all have a big party. And we'll have dinner a lot, and uh, you know, <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and as long as there's food, everybody is fed. And every, everybody shares, but we, we are very careful. We create central kitchens, we negotiate and work together with, with people who grow food, and that we, we, we say, well, we really don't want any food that has toxic chemicals in it. We don't want any food that destroys the soil fertility or makes compact, compacts the soil so that the water doesn't infiltrate or, and the temperatures are elevated. We know these things now. So you can't really bamboozle the people if they understand it. No. <laughs> so, so, so creating central kitchens allows us to feed everybody with fresh, nutritious food. 
it allows us to store food collectively for the winter or lean times and it allows us to process all the surplus food so that it can be eaten in the in in the when when the harvest is is finished so this is pretty simple stuff finally creator spaces allow us to have mechanical and woodworking and craft and industrial sewing and ceramics so that we can upcycle and recycle all the stuff that's going to the trash and that replaces an economy where you have to build all new things all the time and build more trash so we don't need that and at the same time we need to have fun and we need to have culture we need to learn where did we learn any of these things? Well, we learned it from the religious texts. We learned it from literature, from great literature. It tells us what war is. It tells us what evil is. It tells us about love. And so let's share that and focus on those things. And we can have a great time. And we can do what needs to be done and we can stop doing what doesn't need to be done. We don't have to go to work in cubicles to make buy and sell plastic goo gaws that go around the world in container ships and pollute and you know are wasteful and unnecessary. We can just do what needs to be done. So this one is very close to my heart and I totally believe that we can create these safe spaces with a shared infrastructure where everybody's welcome to have fun, have equal opportunity uh, to contribute to adding value to such a place. And what I'm really interested in is using these safe places and the cultural stages also to connect experts to young people, old craftspeople to young people, to, to learn the proper trades, to share knowledge. And my question is, how many of these kind of places do you think there could be? <coughs> Millions. That's what I'm talking about. Billions. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I don't know. We have 8 billion people, so it's, it's definitely in the millions. But um, basically every community, we should probably think about how large our communities should be. And I think a lot of people, like, they say, well, we can't do that because people are bad. You know, people are selfish. And I've been to 90 countries around the world as a journalist or an ecological researcher. People are great. A tiny minority are extremists and not so good, but the majority of people are wonderful. And so we need to gather them around and say, let's, let's survive, let's live, let's do what needs to be done. Let's not support this kind of, let's not wait and watch the civilization collapse because it's corrupt and and has false narratives and false logic at, at its heart but say this is what it this is what we believe in we believe that all people are equal we believe that life is beautiful on the earth that the earth is abundant and wonderful and the only reason that it's not is where we've raped it where human beings have gone and extracted and, and abused the, the, the earth. Can we restore those places? Absolutely. Should we? Of course. Yes. <laughs> Must we? If we wish to survive, we have to. So let's do it. And we'll make ourselves happier as well, do we? Let's so, have a good so time. Let's have that happen all over the place in millions of spots, all collaborating and learning from one another and doing it in different ways. Well, I think that what we're seeing is that there has to be a transformational change in human civilization. And today we're also showing this video to a room full of soil lovers, <laughs> experts and people working in regional food systems. And uh, I was wondering how can places like ecosystem ration, restoration camps, regenerative communities, safe spaces with the central kitchen, the creator space and the cultural stages, how could they add to the collective knowledge on soil fertility and vitality and how could they add to really 
doing something about it. <laughs> well, I think right now you see a lot of people who don't know what to do. And I think what's interesting, if I hadn't spent 30 years studying ecology and documenting and observing how you do restoration, I'd be pretty upset and worried about what's going on. Mm -hmm. But it helps to know that it's possible to rehabilitate large-scale damaged ecosystems. And it helps even more to know exactly how to do it. And where to go and where to sign up. Yeah, so, but, but once, we, once we realize that we all have a role to play, and we have to do it together, then we have to have a shared intention. We have to have a collective intelligence about this. So it's not up to an individual to decide, okay, we're all gonna do this, John says go, yeah. that's not it. Everybody has to reach the same conclusion that we want to survive, we want our children. I mean, as individuals, we're going to die. I'm 70 years old, this is not about me. This is about young people and the next generations to come for generations, if we get it right. If we don't, then, you know, it's going to be a hard period. There's a need for truth. There's a need for understanding. There's a need for collaboration and, and, and compassion. So ecosystem restoration camps, communities which are working in this way, are living laboratories which define and show well we we try this technique to do 17 day ana uh, aerobic uh, composting and look it's fast and it's effective okay well that one we should definitely go with that that's <laughs> you know and uh, oh look if we have a canopy then the temperature is 10 degrees lower in the in hot periods and it always stays moist and recycles water below the canopy it's a microclimate oh well that's a keeper <laughs> you know let's 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 learn that, that you know everybody. yeah if you if you expose all the soils to direct solar radiation guess what <laughs> the temperature is going to be 10 or 15 degrees higher well that doesn't make giant fields of monocultures that get plowed a couple of times a year at all possible. It's insane thinking. And to imagine that that type of agriculture is more productive than just a natural system, a biodiverse system with multiple canopies of different types of edible plants is ridiculous. So this is the, this is the type of understanding that everyone will naturally come to when they see it and they'll no notice like oh this smells different the the, the, the soil smells different there oh there's lots of phenols from all the different biological things and and that brings us health that's what we need I, I think another thing which is I think another thing which is important is that we have our whole lifetimes to learn. That we stop thinking that we're going uh, for education in order to get a job. I think we need to look at what is valuable. And when you're making fer fertile soils and restoring vegetation and biodiversity, well, that's more valuable than anybody else. So there's a lot of people who are now refugees or homeless or unemployed they can do that if they do that they're the leaders in our society they should be honored for this they should be rewarded for this and they certainly shouldn't like be beggars or be be told that they're they're not worthy they should be rewarded and if we share because we're so productive now we're in ridiculous the the technological advances robotics and all this well what's it for What's it for? To enrich individuals who own these companies? Or is it to, to make everybody be able to live? So if we have this idea that we're just gathering the material possessions and we're going to leave billions of people in abject poverty at the edges of degraded landscapes, nobody's going to make it. But if we just say, oh, we, we have the ability to produce so much stuff, 
we don't need all this stuff. Let's just, just produce what we need make sure that we share with everybody and then everybody has everything and the earth will be as abundant as it possibly can be and we'll all be in great shape so if we want to travel or we want to have transportation we want to do whatever everybody can do that it's not like some can do that and the rest of the people are slaving away to make it possible for them to do that everybody should have a chance to do everything and to reach their full potential to to live their dreams, live the way, live the, the change we want to see on the earth. Equality and joy and love and abundance.